Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Task Human Talks. I'm your host and wellness provider, Jamie Carroll. And today, all the way from Thailand, I have got Sinto Yobera, who is a leadership and transformative coach on the Talks podcast with me today. Welcome, Sinto. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, yeah. Jamie. Thank you for inviting me to have some time with you. Absolutely. I'm excited to dive into this. So you work as a leadership and transformative coach, workplace consultant. How are you helping people in the workplace? There is uh, different ways. I want to say always is that the most important is we help in a mental well-being space mm -hmm. is uh, especially to take themselves uh, a little bit out of their stories. Mm. Right, these stories that they tell to themselves and that stops them to whatever it happens to collaborate with the peers, to manage a relationship, managing up with the leaders yeah. uh, or a top leader or with their teams, how to navigate the work with them. At the end, the base of everything generally is these stories that they tell to themselves. What are some common like stories that you hear that people kind of struggle through in the workplace? The, the most common that, you know, I think that 90% of the of, of the population have, even myself before, yeah. is this, I, I'm not good enough, or I'm not ready, yeah. or I, I'm not a good leader, or what I'm doing here, all these kind of special insecurities. And, and this is generally the biggest way. And as well, what I found is these questions that they do themselves, they said, I have to lead my people or I need to behave in a way, but I'm not. Mm. And they, they feel that they are kind of faking themselves. And yeah, and there is a disconnection between, you know, there's a big friction between what they want and what they should do. How are you helping people break these patterns, these stories? Well, the most important is to first to get an important sense of self-awareness. I was just thinking that too, Sinto, because I feel like a lot of people probably aren't even aware, you know, even as leaders that you're having the story of like, oh, I'm not a good enough leader or who am I to be mm. doing this? I call it three steps, right? And I, I kind of read it, write it down in a method that is called AAA. That is uh, first awareness okay. and especially self-awareness. The second right. one is acceptance of this awareness. And after that, uh, you need to take action. Uh. So what are the actions that you are going to take? after you are aware and you accept who you are and accept who you are not, that that's very important because people, mm -hmm. they need to accept who they are, but especially who they, who they are not. And after take actions and don't try to, to go against what they are not, embrace what they are and how they can bring, you know, into their teams and even into their life, because right. they are people that leaders are, are humans, right? <laughs> and we are humans. I know. I love it. I love that we're talking about leadership, but this is so important for everybody out there because we're all telling ourselves a story about work, about our, our home life, about our relationships, about mm. our day-to-day -day tasks, about everything. And so really just creating awareness around it and then acceptance and then taking action. That's so like amazing for everybody out there listening to this. So actionable steps. Thank you for that. So let's dive back into leaders. So how can leaders begin to lead in a more responsible and ethical way, in your opinion? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. First of all, they need to connect themselves. If they don't connect with themselves, it will be very difficult that they connect with other people and know what is the, the culture or where uh, they work in. If mm. they are fitting with the culture that with, where they are working, See the work environment as a, as a human relationship, not a results um, uh, relationship. But we need to come here to work to get results. Well, what if we say we, we, we come here to work, to collaborate with people, to get the same outcomes? We, because at the end, everything is about outcomes. What is the outcome that you want? And, and not be focused in the bottom line or in the PNL. And there is a big shift now in, in, in leadership as well generational right? right so so the, this is the, the main thing now. what is that generational shift that is one of the my favorite books in, in terms of leadership that is yeah. the leaders eat last from simon sinek explains his uh, leadership that we've been embracing since 1970s from uh, milton friedman about shareholders oriented right okay. so it's a very bottom line and now with the new generations they are asking you know they are even demanding a completely shift 
right? Because we see that this it been working during during the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. It's been been working very well. It makes a lot of progress and money, and whatever. But it, as well, it creates a lot of bubbles, you know, economic bubbles and right. frustration. I like Simon uh, Simon Sinek because he he talk about the dopamine is uh, creating a lot of dopamine and not creating oxytocin and, and serotonin that they are the long term relationship kind of chemicals happiness um, uh-huh. you know chemicals of happiness and it is is what we want you know because this everything is so fast paced yeah. and then going to the result that people it gets a little bit tired and the new generations they want to have something more meaningful not mm. numbers. So it's moving from like all about the numbers, all about the bottom line, all about like shareholders and what everyone's making more to those human connections, how we're relating to each other. I love that. And one of the things you said too, is leaders, like helping leaders connect to themselves. How can leaders connect more with themselves? One of the, my favorite questions when I'm doing coaching with generally ask them what, you know, imagine that we, we kind of we meet in one year and you tell me hey Cinto uh, how are you and I say yeah very good how how are you been doing imagine as you hey Jamie how are you been doing good so what happened in your life and I ask what is the story that you are going to tell me and it has been a very successful year so one of the things I'm writing down right now like connecting to self is really about connecting to the story like and creating right. doing those three A's. That's yeah. great. And another piece you mentioned was culture and companies are so worldwide now, you know, we are working with people from all over the world. I mean, look at you and I here right now having this conversation, <laughs> you yeah, know, from two different cultures, two different backgrounds, like how can leaders be more aware and sensitive to the different cultures to be like inclusive and, you know, including everybody mm. in cultures or like, do you ha- do you ever help them with that yeah especially is one of, of let's say one of the, my specialities and one of my biggest accreditations is in assessment for profiling and intercultural assessment that is okay. global this is very important because we we have a cultures that they tell us how we should behave mm-hmm. right if you were born in america you need to be a winner you have a person who is uh, let's say as a, a, a beautiful example, right? In America, a person who is 23 or 24 years and, and mm-hmm. is already um, a winner or is a person who is, uh, you know, famous or he makes himself kind of wealthy. So he is very recognized in America. Okay, if you go yeah. to Asia, this person probably they would say he's the son of someone. You cannot be like that. Right. right? So these things is, is important. But the, what happened is the country tell us or the culture tell us how we should behave. And our personality, it tells us how we want to behave. And it happens that sometimes you have someone who is very rules oriented, mm-hmm. who wants to work with, let's say, a culture that is very exceptions uh, style, mm-hmm. right? Okay. And you get frustrated. So you need to be aware of that. And you need to kind of assess the other people and how they are and bring in this kind of conversation. It's a very uh, interesting and especially we don't have to say, yeah, you know, diversity is very, is very nice, mm-hmm. right? But the, the, the point is inclusion, you know, diversity in the surface is beautiful. You know, we have, yeah, this amount of people with these religions and these sexual orientation and these, these, well, what happened if the personalities, they don't get together, they don't right. get along. It's so much about like that human connection and like getting to know the person individually as a leader, I feel like. A woman I know here in the United States, you know, she had a very successful business as a CEO and leader. She actually wrote a book called Lunch with Lucy. And one of the things that she would do is on Wednesdays, every Wednesday, she would have a lunch availability and people on mm. her team, you know, would sign mm. up to have lunch with her. But she called it lunch with Lucy. Her name is not Lucy. Her real name is not Lucy. It's Sherry. And so people would go to lunch with her and they would feel more comfortable like sharing anything. Like she wanted to know about your life, about it's not like a work meeting. It has nothing. It's yeah. not like no judgment. What you share with me is going to affect your pay that I'm going to give you or a promotion. You know, it's just a yeah. way to like understand a little bit more about you. What's your life like? What, what, are, you, what are your struggles? And I thought that that was so it's really about that human connection. And I think like when leaders can really focus on that piece, it can really raise up the bottom line. One of the things I want to get into as well is delegation. So we really want to dive into the whole delegation piece on this podcast episode. 
when it comes to workplace delegation, what can a manager or leader, like what do they need to consider? So if I have to be a comeback with a coaching question, he's asking you, what do you think is the biggest enemy of delegation? And that is the first question that I do to everyone who is saying, oh, because I, I'm good on delegation. So what do you think is, a, is and at the end is ego. <laughs> it's our ego. So we are ourselves. Ourselves, we are the worst enemy to delegate because, oh, you are a micromanager, or if I start to delegate, uh, that means that maybe I, I'm, I'm not good enough, you know, how a leader can, can delegate. And, and the first thing to delegate, that is the, probably the most important to you as a leader to make your team grow, right. is generally people, they, they think kind of egoistically and, and think, okay, if I start to delegate with this person, uh, maybe he will take my position one day. And that's well depends on the leadership that they have, because if the, the leadership style is very assertive, okay. it would be more difficult for them to delegate because they will go and say, you do this, you do that. So maybe you mm -hmm. need to shift to another kind of leadership style because your team, maybe they prefer uh, or an influencing style or a bridging style, right. or maybe they are more reasoning. So you need to go with kind of more elaborate uh, stuff to go to them. But delegation is, if you ask to, to the leader that said, are you good in delegation? You know, I, I don't have statistics, but probably the 80% they will tell you yes. And if you go to their teams and you said, do you think that your boss is, uh, or your leader is good on delegated? They will probably, they will come with the 10 or the 20% they will tell you yes. And what I like on that is when I have to do, a, you know, when, when I have in front of 360, how they see themselves and how their team see them. Yeah. How they look at the, at, at the leader, right? And, and right. that's a very nice question as well to the leader to ask them, say, how do you think that your team see you? Mm. Seeing you? And you have surprising answers from themselves when they stop for a moment and say, okay, what do they think about me? Mm -hmm. So when there is that discrepancy, when I'm like, you know, if I'm like, oh, everybody loves me as a delegator, but yet you find out that the team doesn't feel that mm -hmm. way, right? or there's discrepancies there, then how do you help that person become a better delegator? Like one thing is like maybe changing the way they delegate, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what was one of the things you said, if they're too assertive, like how can you change that? Is yeah. there anything yeah. else, like any other ways to become better? I think that the best way is to know what is your uh, team member's needs. Because as a human, they have different needs. I will give you an, an example. Right. Two days ago, I was coaching an, a leader and he wants to, uh, one of the person that he's, uh, he's leading, he was, I, I, I want to try to, to give her more independence and, and to, to delegate to her more that she can take more initiative. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and he is managing another guy who is in another, another country, he's in India. Okay. And he said, and how is this guy? So, oh, these guys, you know, it's very easy to delegate because he's very driven or whatever. So, okay, so what do you think is the need that this person has? Well, he wants to grow. Mm. Say, okay, fantastic. So it would be very easy to delegate to this person. But with the other that you want to delegate, what is her story? And he told me, he said, well, he's a, he's a single mother. She'd been fired in the, just after the COVID start. Uh. So she is with us after nine months. So what do you think is her need? So just safety. Wow, that's really powerful. Right? And you say, yeah. okay, so how you will approach to a person that you want to give safety and she take initiative. At the end, he came out that to say, okay, I, I need to ask her, I need your help to do this project. Mm -hmm. But this project is, is my project, but you will develop. Don't worry, if you screw up, if there is a failure, I'm the responsible. You need to know what are the human needs of, or the needs of, of, your, of your people. And, right. and this generally happens with, with the, you know, what are their needs in life? Some people, they like to grow and other people just, yeah, they just want to have a job. This is amazing because I think it's, it's like such a simple thing like, oh, yeah, of course, know everybody's needs. But so often we kind of clump everybody as the same, right? Like if I'm managing 10 employees, it's like, here's how I'm going to delegate to all of them. But that might not work. And I'm going to get frustrated. They're going to be frustrated. Everyone's going to be frustrated. <laughs> uh, and yeah. opening up that human connection line of communication to understand yeah. what people really need and delegating from that place. Wow. One of my questions was going to be, how do you define a successful delegation? 
I feel like we kind of just answered that. <laughs> like one, you know, when you had, when you know the person's needs like that, that's what makes a successful delegation. Almost. Yeah. Is there anything else you would add to that? Well, I think that especially first you need to recognize yourself because you have been mm-hmm. able to delegate. Right. That I think that is a very successful because they say I've been able to delegate to the right person because this person is matching her or his needs. And as well, we are getting where we want to go, right? And we are learning. Sometimes even, even I asked to, to some leaders, they said, what if you delegate almost in purpose to fail? What will yeah. happen? And they said, well, we will learn. <laughs> so, you know, you, you take out the failure part of, of the delegation, right? If they right. fail, don't worry, you will learn. That's what, that was actually going to be my next question. How do you course correct in a, fa- in a failed delegation? Like what, what can a leader do to kind of course correct? Learning is obviously going to be the first step from that. Well, first of all, a leader needs to know, you know, it's not how to delegate, it's with who delegate. Because if you have the human needs, you maybe you are going, you want to delegate with someone that you think your story is, oh, this person mm-hmm. is very good and wants delegation, you know, and you just without asking or without previous conversation, you throw the ball and, uh, and maybe you are creating stress. Right. Yeah. Right? There is no psychological safety. You throw it because you think that the person is like you. Right. No, exactly. You, you know, it's a platinum rule of, of Tony Alessandra. Mm. Uh, you know, the golden rule, we, we've been, you know, kind of growing with a golden rule of uh, treat the others as you want to be treated. Well, mm. that's, uh, it can be, you know, can backfire you, right? So the, the point of Tony Alessandra in, 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 the, in the platinum rule is try to, you know, treat the others how they want to be treated. I love this, by the way. I've never even thought of this in this in this way about that. This is amazing. Wow, that is such a huge shift. Uh, I feel like this can go such a long way um, in like just any sort of relationship that you have. Treat others the way mm-hmm. they want to be treated, not you. Very important, I think, in the workplace, though, as as a leader. That's amazing to think about not how to delegate or even what to delegate, but it's thinking about who to delegate to. It is, um, I, I'm putting this person in a problem. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a question that the leader have to say. It's not, I'm going to delegate because I'm a good delegator. Well, okay. So I have the enough psychological safety to them can tell me, hey, I'm not ready. I have yeah. problems at home and I, I'm not ready or uh, I don't feel ready to, or I, I don't feel prepared for this, for this task. And you can ask, what do you think that you need? How can I help you? Yeah. So that's the, 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 you know, the leader question. And I love a, a Netflix series, you know, and I, I generally I, I talk about that in the last three months that is called New Amsterdam. But the, just at the beginning, the new director of the, of the hospital, he arrived and said, how can I help? Ah, and, yeah. And, and that's a magic word. How can I help you? I love it. You know, this guy, Gary Vee, for example, is always saying, so you, you, are, you are working for your people. You are, they right. are not working for you. You are working for them. And I, I really love this, this spirit of, you know, you are serving them. I love this talk on delegation. That just, that makes so much sense. Really, you know, kind of a different approach, you know, a shift in like the way to think about it is like really building up that human connection a little bit more and understanding who mm. your people are and what their needs are. And then, you know, who to delegate to, and that's going to make all the difference. That's, it's not going to be what to delegate. You know, you're going to also maybe prevent those failures because you're delegating to the right person and you are understanding what they need. So just Mm -hmm. that in and of itself can go uh, such a long way. What about influence? How, how do we maintain positive influence in the workplace? I think that it goes pretty on the hands of delegation as well in the terms of if I know the needs of the person and I know how this person wants to be treated, I will know how to influence this person to get the, the outcome that we both want. And that's the key that, you know, that's the most yeah. important. It's not, I want to influence you to get the outcome that I want. That is not influence. That is manipulation. I want to influence you to, we, we both, we will get the right, the, the outcome that we want. That works for both of us. Correct. It's awesome. both ways. It's not only one way straight. And so straight, how can people, how can leaders strengthen their influence? It's understanding the needs. 
you know, this is making me think, you know, what if you're leading a really big team of people and how do you recommend how, how can leaders or managers, how can they connect with their clients? Does it have to be a one-on-one? Like what, is there any like recommendations or how do you guide people in that direction of understanding their team and their, the people that are working for them? You know, how do they, how do they understand their needs a little bit better? When you are dealing with, with generally big, big teams, um, you always, they say that you have, I always said that you have your, your champions, the people that you want to grow as right. well. And you give them this, this delegation and you create a kind of very horizontal structure. It's difficult when you lead maybe a team of 20, you need to know, um, you know, how is, how is everyone? The thing is, there is a, a very nice way. And it's, you know, leaders and people, they need to think or they need to be aware that they generally have more time uh, with their teams or with their, in their work with the people that they work, like with their family. So it becomes a second family. If this becomes your second family, what if you see it as a family? So how you will treat your son, you know, you will tell your son what to do, or you will try to, okay, I want that my son learn. I will give him a little bit of guidance and I will let him all fail and I will let him work a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. But you need to know how, how they are and uh, how to do it. I think that, you know, the, the thing that said you lunch with Lucy, maybe yeah. it's a, you know, it's a coffee, a coffee beat with Ben. You know, right. and you, maybe you don't have time to, to, you can have, you know, you have five days a week, you know, you have 20 people in four weeks, you can know all your people because you have a coffee one-on-one with each one and they feel all important because they are important. Right. Yeah. Really getting to know them on that. Like, uh, even if it's just like a quick 20 minute coffee, getting to know them, asking those questions, you know, even if you only have five minutes asking one question that will help you better understand them in that moment, I think could go a right. long way. And, it, and especially, the, the, you know, they need to show, and that's one of the things, right? The leaders, they need to be vulnerable, you know? That it goes with the ego, right? Mm-hmm. If you take your ego out, you are vulnerable because you are a human being. You are not a superhero. You are not Superman. You are not Batman. You are not, you, you know, you are not yeah. Star Devil. You are not, you, you are a person. You are a human right. being. You have good days. You have bad days. You have right. problems at home. You, you argue with people. You, you have happy days. So they are like you. Yeah. No matter the position that you have. Yeah. I think as ego, like when we're in our ego, we can like over identify with our position. Right. You know, like Mm -hmm. I am the CEO and it's like, you're human actually, you know? So watching out for like that, you're not over identifying with that title, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You can go a long way as well. And as well, it's very good that your people that you are leading, they see you as a human being. Mm, Yeah. And they, they, they have to understand that sometimes, all the, you know, if you ask to all the leaders, uh, because working with, with different coaches, we talk about that. And you ask, what do you think is the biggest uh, challenge for the leaders? And it's a word. It's loneliness. Because they, they kind of isolate themselves with their ego and, you know, I, I, cannot, I cannot look weak for my people. What mm-hmm. if I look weak for my people, right? Well, yes, you are weak. Sometimes you are weak. And what happens? You are human. Yeah. Right? right. Show this weakness. <laughs> yeah, we all have those human experiences. You know, I worked with a coach once for a year-long life coaching program. And that was one of the things I actually really appreciated her, right? Because we could look up to her as like this leader for all of us, teaching us all of these things in this program. But then she had a moment where she lost her mother. And she was very like real and honest and had to cancel a meeting last minute because she was like in a depression, you know what I mean? Like wanted to allow herself mm. to move through it. And I just like, was like, wow, that's really awesome. Like she would share that with us as opposed to like buttoning it up and not allowing herself to have those emotions with us because she was the leader. And it also like, not that we need permission, but I feel like it helped with, with almost like giving us that permission, like you're human too, like tell me if you're going through something and you need a moment, you know what I mean? Or you need to grieve something. So I think that's a really good point that you just made. And Mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. And as I said, you know, many times as well, we need to talk with the staff um, or the, the, the the people that we are leading. Sometimes I talk with, with people, with teams, right? You're working with teams and they talk about the leader and and they talk, ah, because this is it. And you say, okay, did you, did you put yourself in the shoes? Did you went to your leader and have the 
enough confidence and, and courage and bravery to go and ask and said, hey, let's talk that the leader is called John, right? Hey, John, let me tell you, let me ask you something. How do you manage the pressure? Maybe with this question, your leader, it will, maybe it will, <laughs> it will kind of start to cry. We, we are coaches and when we are working with the leaders, they are, they are human beings and you feel that the, right. sometimes it's loneliness and they, you know, they break into pieces in front of you. And they have this, this thing, oh, I know that my team uh, see me as a, for my friends, but as an asshole. And, right. and I am not. And I am not. You know, right. and you yeah. see the pain, the pain that they feel it and say, okay, how, how can we change that? It sounds like as leaders, we can better delegate and influence by opening up a line of like vulnerable communication with others. And then as team members, we can kind of open up that conversation, that vulnerability, even to our leaders as well. So it's like, it goes both ways. One of the, the, the nicest things that the leader can do is to go to the team and say, I don't have a clue what we have to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And this is happening in, in you know, with, with this pandemic that we had, uh, there is as many, you know, <laughs> I have to say, well, and, and governments and, and mm-hmm. people who is living in countries that they don't have a clue what to do. And if you go and you say to your team, I don't have a clue what to do. I need your help. Yeah. What do you would do? Do you mm-hmm. think that your team will tell you, hey, you are the leader, you, <laughs> it's your responsibility? They will say, oh, of course. Well, what if we do that? What if we do that? Right. Right? Yeah. Because you are asking for help. Absolutely. Yeah. I think one a, a really powerful answer is, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Like if someone says that to me, I don't know. I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> like there's yeah. something that, you know, that's, that's really powerful. Yeah. I think that, yeah, yeah we're so it's afraid it. to admit that though. Right. Cause we want to have all the answers, but just being able to be like, Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't, I don't know. Something that I really love is to look at the, um, the body language, right? Uh, because yeah. to say, I, I don't know, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, 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 you, you, you show that you don't know, right? But there is other, other, other leaders that they say, I don't know, uh, right? And, yeah. and, you know, it's more aggressive, right? Right. And it's kind of, it's an attacking, you know, it's like the, yeah. that someone is attacking you and, you and you are very defensive. Right. When you are saying, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, what do you think? What, yeah. what if you was in my position, what you would do is completely different. And this is important. This is something that we, you know, kind of, we encourage leaders to, to manage their body language, to understand uh-huh. how their words and how their posture, their communication, their tone of voice, right? How, right. how they can create a different impact when they are communicating. Making sure your body language is opening you up to communication as opposed to shutting you down from further communication Correct. and shifting it to that more open space. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's it's, it's basic. Some things are so automatic, I think too, right? Our reactions to things, our body language. So like really bringing that, you know, going back to that awareness, having self-awareness right. around the things that you're doing. Now we've talked about how things are shifting from, you know, from the bottom line to more of the communication, that personal touch piece. But have, how have you seen things in the workplace shift since COVID started? Besides well, the obvious, you know, obviously everyone's virtual. We've got that big thing going, you know. <laughs> well, I, I think that, for, of course, that has been the, the major change that I've seen in my life. And I'm, yeah. I'm 51, so I'm, I, it never happens uh, like that. Even the coaching practice already, you know, completely strict. Right. When right, yeah. before the COVID, someone was asking me, hey, can you coach someone by virtual? And I was saying, no, well, we mm. need to have the, the, you know, the one on one contact. Nice, yeah. and, you know, and, and <laughs> these things. I was traveling to Dubai. And I was trying to, I was traveling, you know, all the time to coach clients internationally. And, wow, and yeah. well, everything went out. And when you are managing teams, uh, what they realize as well is the resources you have very centralized resources you are in danger because it happens on pandemic or something like that and you know how the people can access yeah to the, to the resources if they are not in the workplace right right and this human connection it gets lost as well i've been many people many many leaders that because they don't know how to make a shift and they they are so scared to show that i i i don't know 
So they, they make it worse because they, you know, they went in, in a Zoom meeting and they come and they make a lecture. And it's not the same. And, and, and even you cannot, oh, let's create a coffee. Um, every Friday we will do a coffee, a coffee meeting. Yeah, but are you asking them how they feel? Are you asking them if they want to make a coffee meeting? I think that has been a, a very slap in our face to everyone. Yeah. Right. And, mm -hmm. and we are and we are dealing with. But if you ask me what is the medicine, I would tell you, I, I really don't know. Everyone has to, to have their medicine in terms of people nervous. And and it, there is things that has been created even more uh, connection through virtually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they never met. Yeah. And now they start to meet than in the office right or in the in the workplace and that they give an opportunity as well to okay so we start to 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 meet people from other countries that they was working and now we are working together so if you see these opportunities and you start to look at okay what is the good things on that what the opportunities it can bring me that how can i amplify my the work how can the people can use the the, the time more effectively is to look at the positive things more than the what right. the pandemic take us out, okay? Mm. And and I love this the, the approach from positive intelligence is that what is the gift and the opportunity that is bringing this situation? What kind of changes do you think leaders need to be prepared for in the future? Like, what is something that you know leaders and managers can do now to begin preparing for like the future of the workplace? Not that you're like a fortune teller and know what the future is going to hold, but is there anything that you would recommend now to leaders that they, if they're not already doing, that they begin to do? There is um, a book that is, uh, I think it's Jacob, Jacob Morgan, okay. uh, who read a book, it's called the, the Leader of the Future, or Future of Leaders. Uh, I, now I'm, I'm a little bit confused on the title of the book, but he, he, he put five mindsets and four skills that okay. uh, leader, the leader of the future needs to, to have, because okay. he asked, to 150 leaders of Fortune, 500 Fortune, and the mm -hmm. top leaders, he asked the same question: What we need to get teaching to the leaders of the future? Right. Right. And he comes with this graphic of these nine skills, five skills, and that. The only one who is a technical skill is technology. All the others are human skills. That is something that you know. I love Simon Sinek. He say it's not soft skills; it's human skills. Mm -hmm. There is no soft, are very hard. Yeah. <laughs> right? yes. And they are human skills. You need to you need to learn how to be a coach. You need to learn how to how to navigate. You need to learn how to be diverse, how to be agile. I think that the leader, what they need to have is a surfer mindset. Because you cannot control the, the waves, but you uh. can learn how to surf. Because you cannot control the waves. You are with the with your surfboard in the in the middle of the sea, and you right. don't know how the how tall is the will be the the wave or whatever. Yeah. So you need yeah. to learn how to surf, right? Ah, so it's yes. A surfing exercise. Oh, this has been such a great uh, little jam that we're having here. We've talked a lot about. It, it sounds just to me like it's really coming down to that human connection piece. As we begin to wrap up, is there anything else that you want to share with everyone? with le any leaders out there or really anyone just looking for a transformation, anything else that you think is relevant? Something that I think is the most simple and difficult question that the, the leader can ask themselves and ask uh, the questions that who you are. And don't tell me your name. Don't tell me your position. Don't tell me what you are doing. If you are a coach or you are you know, who you are as a human being, what are your values? Are you honoring in your position? How can you honor yourself? How can you be the best version of yourself as a human being, not as a leader? If the destiny, God, or another person they give you the 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 you know the position of a leader, you still are a human being. You have your value. You are chosen as a leader because that value. Right. Don't break them. You know. Yeah. Just keep following. Keep being doing. Be, keep being doing. Being yourself. Right. right? Getting in touch with you your human self first so you can then be a better leader self that's awesome. that's for me is a you know a leadership start with with oneself right mm -hmm. and it's the only selfish thing that i think that a person needs to have is take mm -hmm. care of themselves yeah be aligned with with themselves right. Uh, right yeah and be honest mm -hmm. right with, with itself with this awareness with this acceptance and you know 
I'm not good at that. Oh, well, okay. So how can I learn if I don't, I cannot learn or I don't have, you know, who can help me? Right. Who take, you know, who has this strength that I don't have? Love who it. can help me so, yes. so we can work together? Yeah. And that just creates a more powerful workforce, I think, you know, when you're really understanding yourself and, you know, being honest and accepting that part of yourself. And then when you know who to delegate it Mm. to instead, so you can really and truly like, you know, work together and work as a team. And like, I I think, you know, when you've got that, it's going to increase your bottom line anyways, which is, (laughs) you know, but you're not focusing on that. You're focusing on the connection piece instead. Yeah. which is where the world is going, you know, where we're all shifting into. So I, I think it's very difficult that if the people work together to, to, to get something, they don't get what they want. Right. I think it's very, very difficult. Unless that you want to, to change the, you know, you know, something from mother, mother earth or, or you mm-hmm. know, mother, mother earth, is, you, you cannot change a volcano or something like that, but, you know, to achieve things that humans we achieve, Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there is no one who cannot achieve things with people, right? Yeah. The bottom line, it will be always there. The results, it will be always, always there. Right. And, um, you know, and what happened is, yeah, to change the, 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 the short-term orientation to a long-term orientation. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a big, big shift as well. Amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sinjo, for joining me today to chat with me all about leadership. Um, it's been really amazing having you on here and it's definitely shifted my perspective, even on some things that, that I didn't think about. Um, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And for any of you out there listening, if you're a leader or manager, or you're just really ready for a a transformation to understand yourself better as well, make sure you reach out to Sinto on the app. He is here to help you to become a better leader, maybe not only in the workplace, but also in your own life. So any last minute words, Sinto, before we hang up? Oh, thank you very much. It's been yeah. an amazing conversation. I really, I really right. love it. And, and, and yeah, and it's, it's very nice to work with you, to be in, in, in as human, to help people. That yeah. is what we really, we really want. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. And to everyone out there listening, that's it for today. And I'll see you on the next episode.